Hi, welcome to our quick start guide on what is object oriented. This is a five minute primer. My name is Arden Thomas. I'm the Syncom Small Talk product manager. You can reach me at athomas at syncom.com. So what is object oriented and why would you want to use it? Well, if you're developing a software application or system, objects are a better match to the world and that world can be real or virtual. So if you're developing something and there's a real world object that you're trying to replicate, you can look to that real world object to answer questions like what data is this object responsible for? What behavior does it have? And I can replicate that in software with the pieces that I want in software. But what, what if there are no real world objects? You can have a virtual world and imagine how it works and replicate that. So some of the things we want to figure out are who owns the data? Who is responsible for what behavior? And you can use techniques like anthropomorphism, which is making all the objects people and figuring out what, what each person in this system or organization, what information they're responsible for and what behavior they're responsible for. So it's much easier for us to think about. Also messages in the real world, we communicate by talking to each other or emailing each other. We send messages to each other and that's how you communicate with objects. So it's, it's kind of natural for people to think about and there can be things that we can look to to answer some difficult questions in structuring and organizing this. And, that, and that's important because this really simplifies how you can think about design, designing your applications, designing your system, and it gives really big organizational benefits. And if I was to sum it up in one thing about what's good about it is it reduces complexity. And reducing complexity is key to solving difficult problems and keeping large software projects manageable. So let's take a quick look. What, what does an object look like? Well, here's a representation of an object. It has data and it's surrounded by methods. Okay, data is private to the object Methods are code, and you communicate with messages. Now the data, it says it's private to the object. What does that mean? It means that you can't access that data unless you ask the object. And if the object was designed to share that data with you, you can do that. How do you ask the object? You send it a message. So uh, a method, is the equivalent of a function or procedure in other languages and you invoke a method by sending a message with the same name and, and that that object those methods can access that private data and manipulate it and give you an answer or, or, or do some behavior and again you invoke that behavior by sending a message Finally, there is something called object inheritance, and that's a technique to structure your work where you can reuse uh, the, the objects in the, in the lower part here. They inherit the data and the behavior, the methods of their, of their parent class or object definition. So it's again, it's a, a, a technique to structure your work to organize it better, and to reuse data and code. If you have any feedback on how this could be clear, please send it to Arden Thomas, a Thomas at syncom.com. Thank you.